Um, quick update from Davos. I'm not in Davos. I'm in New York City, but I'm reading up on what's happening in Davos. Whoops. Because we need to we need to keep an eye on the World Economic Forum because uh, what happens there tends to spread uh, to, to everywhere and tends to have a huge impact on both intellectual, political, and economic thinking. Uh, that occurs between World Economic Forum uh, get-togethers. Anyway, w one of the big stories out of the World Economic Forum is, and I actually, I mentioned this and I talked about this on one of the shows before the WEF, so I was on top of the story way before it became a big story, and that is the conflict between the United States and Europe over trade, and in particular the fact that the Inflation Reduction Act that the Biden administration passed provide subsidies uh, to uh, U.S. Uh, tech and, and, uh, and um, alternative energy companies uh, in ways that violate uh, trade agreements with the Europeans. The Europeans are super upset. Like, the, you know, China subsidizes industries. Now, I've argued that that does not help their industries. It actually hurts them. But China subsidizes their interests. The United States feels like, oh, no, we need to start subsidizing our industries. So the United States subsidizes its industries, and that gives them a perceived comparative advantage versus Europe. So Europe now looks at that and says, wait a minute, now we're being screwed, so we're going to subsidize our business. So what happens is, once you start on this central planning, uh, once you start on this government, you know, on, on, on state intervention into economics and subsidies and trade barriers and tariffs and the whole gamut of issues, which really, I think, were brought to the forefront by the Trump administration, uh, when Trump was president and, and have just gotten worse since with Biden just taking on Trump's policies and making them even worse. Uh, this has accelerated. Uh, Europe is now, uh, because, of the, um, because of the Inflation Reduction Act and all the subsidies involved in it, um, and, and because of the CHIP Act uh, and the subsidies involved in it, Europe is now saying it's put its industries at a significant disadvantage. There's a lot of discussion at Davos, at the World Economic Forum, between different world leaders, business leaders, and so on, and how to, in a sense, combat this, how to, how to address this. And, and uh, it looks like Europe is going to put together a massive uh, economic bill that is going to subsidize. And so all the, all, the, uh, all the positive moves that have been made in the global economy in terms of reduction of tariffs, reduction of trade barriers, reduction of subsidies, reduction of state central planning, uh, uh, certainly in the sense of trying to, um, uh, across countries at least, uh, you know, we were making enormous progress in those realms. I mean, subsidies were down, trade barriers were down, tariffs were down. Uh, you know, between, I'd say between 1991 and, and really starting in World War II, but so, uh, after World War II, but suddenly from the early 1990s through 2016, massive gains in terms of world trade, in terms of freedom of trade, in terms of reduction of subsidies and, and a reduction in the involvement in government in the economy. And since then, uh, and this is e even true during uh, during uh, Clinton administration, during Obama administration, and starting with Trump, and now definitely on steroids with Biden. Um, all the bad policies Trump started, Biden has doubled up on, and this shows the unity of Republicans and Democrats when it comes to these kind of things. Uh, they have they have doubled up on them, and um, you're now seeing uh, uh, you know a deterioration in the terms of trade globally. You're seeing trade barriers going up. You're seeing increased in subsidies, increased in state controls. And all of this, in my view, stimulated by the U.S., all of this being led by the U.S. Uh, and, and right now, you know, uh, um, Biden's trade representative is in Europe telling them that uh, we have now a new approach to trade, um, and that approach to trade has to advance the needs of American workers, protect the environment, and create inclusive prosperity that is reduce inequality in the United States. Uh, so that means trade barriers, trade management, trade uh, manipulation, bad news, bad news for all of us. So th those of us who believe in uh, economic liberty, economic freedom, uh, Trump and Biden have been a disaster uh, 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 for us. Uh, so that is going on. So in the background, there's a lot of these negotiations going on. 
around Europe's response to um, the, the, the latest uh, Biden administration, parts of which were, were bilateral, uh, were uh, both Republicans and Democrats supported um, it, to, to subsidize and support American industry. Uh, that's one thing going on in, in, um, in, uh, in Davos. Just to give you a sense of what, what, what you know, uh, what Davos has, you know, Davos has these panels with all these important people. Uh, one of the panels uh, that they had uh, featured uh, Republican um, governor of Georgia, uh, Brian Kemp. It included uh, Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, Kristen Sinema from Arizona, uh, Governor Pritzker, Democrat from Illinois, all talking about the U.S. and the status of the U.S., but all really using the opportunity to pitch their states, their, uh, their particular areas for more investment, to bring people in. Um, yeah, but it was, uh, but Kemp was uh, quite, quite aggressive uh, trying to pitch Georgia as a place where uh, global companies should be investing. So they have these panels, a lot of people sit around. And I think the real action in World Economic Forum happens in the back rooms where these leaders meet and, and discuss a variety of different issues and they schmooze with corporate leaders. And, uh, you know, uh, all of that is kind of... Uh, um, intermingle the mingling is where the real action uh, actually happens okay one other uh, interesting story coming out of davos um uh 200 million is over 200 million i don't know the exact number but more than 200 million is signed a a letter um uh, that was submitted uh, to the world economic forum um, in davos where they are urging the global elites the uh, global the politicians, the corporate leaders to start working towards and advocate for much higher taxes on the ultra rich, on themselves. So we're talking about ultra rich people saying, we want to pay more taxes, raise our taxes. Um, the, the letter says tax the ultra rich and do it now. It says, it's simple common sense economics. It's an investment in our common good and a better future that we all deserve and as millionaires, we want to make that investment. <laughs> now, of course, they could all write checks to the government. That nobody has to force them to do it. But, but notice, I've always said this, people always think, no, rich people vote against taxes and poor people vote to increase the taxes on the rich. That's not how it works. Uh, the rich vote to raise their taxes taxes on themselves all the time. This is the guilt. Um, uh, this is the guilt. This is the ignorance uh, that that unfortunately our culture inculcates in uh, the wealthy. Um, uh, the, 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 they describe themselves in this case as a group of high net worth Americans who share profound concern about the destabilizing level of inequality in America. Uh, and they, they, they want their taxes raised and the focus is on America, but its focus really is uh, globally, right? Uh, 206 signatories, actually from 12 countries. So it's not just Americans, but the Americans dominate, uh, dominate the list. But it, it, is, it is fascinating. They call themselves, by the way, they call themselves patriotic millionaires. Millionaires who care about their country. So they want to they they have higher taxes on themselves and on the other millionaires who maybe don't care about their country. Just the, the, the association of patriotism with paying higher taxes is bizarre and offensive, right? Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content. And of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.